The Scottish Government's Children's Minister has led children in a march on the Parliament to demand that the Scottish Government does the things that the Scottish Government is already doing or the Scottish Government is planning to do in any case. Just watch this. So a children's march demanding their rights from the government, putting pressure on the government to accept the philosophy that they already accept. Now, the Scottish government's obsessed with human rights. And when it comes to children, and it comes to schools in particular, human rights are like a religion substitute. And what they mean by human rights is a sort of vague philosophy that's actually got very little connection to the actual United Nations Convention of the Rights of the Child, because the actual UNCRC is virtually irrelevant to the day-to-day -day lives of primary school kids. But it takes on a life of its own in Scottish schools and the Scottish government circles, and rights become synonymous with just sort of goodness and niceness. So this march, led by Mary Todd, the SNP Children's Minister, and organised by the Children's Parliament. So there's a, there's a group of kids in the march, but it will reach more widely as well as it's publicised through schools in Scotland. Now, just to emphasise, the children in these pictures are just the raw material for the adults. The adults are using the children. The children are not doing anything wrong. They're the innocent party in this matter. When the Scottish Government says they're listening to children, what they really mean is, we've got hold of some children, we've stuffed them full of our own philosophy, and then we say to them, what do you think? And they just reflect back what the government's told them. So that's what we've got going on here. So this children's march, I've got a few pictures of it. Let's see what's on the placards, see what you make of this. Right, don't sell alcohol in supermarkets. Right, that's obviously a really pressing issue for kids in Scotland. They think alcohol should just be sold in off licenses. Why? I mean, it's just blatantly obvious that this is not a concern of children in Scotland. The adults supervising the kids, telling them to put this on their signs, they should be utterly embarrassed because it's so obvious they're just using the kids to deliver their own messages. But, well, if you're in an environment where no one picks up on these things, I suppose you just feel you can get away with anything. Right, another placard. Our ideas matter. Okay, which ideas of children? Going to Florida on holiday? Having no school on a Friday? Okay, kids have ideas sometimes that are good. You should listen to their ideas. Sometimes maybe the appropriate response is to dismiss them, give them pretty short shrift. Sometimes explain what the problem might be. Sometimes take up the idea. But if you're saying to children to demand that our ideas matter, that's priming them to feel aggrieved. And if someone doesn't take up their suggestion, it's as though their rights are being denied. So when it comes to home life, if you find that children don't seem to be able to accept that they can't have their own way, just bear in mind that this is what they're having presented to them at school. So when you say, no, I don't think that's a good idea, they've got something in them that's possibly thinking, have you never heard of children's rights? You have to respect my ideas. Right, what have we got next? Help me to be me. I mean, that's a vacuous soundbite if ever you heard one. But what do they think it means? Well, in a contemporary culture, it might well be that they're thinking about transgenderism, help me to be me, you know, if I'm a boy and I want to wear a dress, you just have to help me to be, be me. But basically, the implication is, don't try to correct me, don't try to mould my character, just to prove and affirm the way I am. Now, okay, there's something in that, but that's not the whole job of parents, adults, teachers in general. And that phrase, help me to be me, is going to tend to make children resistant to that moulding character building process that's really, really important. Right, we've got a right to play. I mean, what on earth does that mean? I mean, a few years ago, a, a boy living down the road from us, it was about five or six maybe, uh, his mum said, okay, David, put your toys away now, it's time to go out. And he said, no, I've got a right to play. And he'd been taught that at school. Right, what the right actually means is, for example, you can't send kids to work as chimney sweeps for 10 hours a day, so they've got no time to play. But are kids taught at school they've got a duty to help with jobs around the home? Uh, no. But if you tell children they've got a right to play, that will sound to them like the absolute right to spend all day on the PS4, and the general effect is to undermine parents. Right, no shouty teachers. How about that? There's a bit of documentation that goes along with this. 
and it says that children don't like being told off basically now you probably find children often have a low threshold for what they describe as shouting and this obviously will also include parents they say teachers but surely the same standard must apply to parents the young people will think now proponents of this sort of line if you hear them dealing with children they talk ever so gently and it becomes almost a bit a bit unnatural that someone could be so gentle in everything they say but the fact is that people get angry you know if young people if children behave in a really defiant and rude manner the teacher might get angry and then it might show in some way is that a problem if children are going to learn to interact with real people they need to realize that the other thing with tone of voice is it does make a difference sometimes you can say something to someone in one way and they'll ignore it but then you'll say it again with a bit more steel in your voice and they will do it that's just part of human nature i mean you probably find the same with your with your pet as well what they're heading for here is the situation where if parents or teachers raise their voice or put a bit of steel in their voice then they'll be reported and the scottish government's redefinition of child abuse to include basically shouting as well is a part of this what will the consequence be it will mean that adults will become more and more fearful around children children can behave appallingly really wind up the adults but the adults will know if they just get angry just raise their voice they could be for it but more broadly on this this is the government saying to children we're on your side against the teachers i mean if they can't see that that's undermining discipline and respect in schools well i give up we want to tell trusted adults our worries in scottish education there's an obsession with therapeutic dealings with young people often under the well-being banner some adults want to establish inappropriately close relationships with children based on emotional sharing leading to dependency and undermining resilience now for different teachers different things will make the teacher's day maybe for one teacher it will be if the rugby team wins a game maybe for another teacher it will be if they have a really great intellectual discussion but for some teachers if a pupil comes along and talks about a problem they really love that. That, that that's the highlight of their day okay which is fine this is a matter of balance but if you've got too many teachers too keen to please 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 come and talk to me about your worries then that can be undermining of the resilience of the children so our next placard love and understanding marching on parliament demanding love and understanding you're not going to get love from the government uh, also you're not going to get love in general by demanding it in any case but it's again this idea that human rights basically means niceness goodness and love and, and everything positive now these kids probably all actually experience love but where do they experience that at home and from their family what will the children think well they think okay but it must ultimately come from the government because they're the people that you need to demand love and understanding from in the first place children's rights matter i agree no child soldiers no imprisonment without trial no kidnapping all those things were totally against them and that's really important it's just completely irrelevant to anything they're talking about here children's health scotland's wealth well that seems pretty meaningless but actually there's probably more truth in the reverse scotland's wealth leads to children's health because we're a relatively wealthy country and adults have agreed in this country to provide a national health service and that leads to good health in general for children but the children have been taught here that health is a, a right to demand so when they go to hospital they're not going to be thinking oh i really appreciate this it's really good to live in this country they're thinking i've got a right to health care so you better do it right for me and when it's done there'll be no sense of gratitude it's just you've done what's expected you had to do that for me so as they grow up rather than thinking this society we've got a really positive thing i need to contribute to it they're going to have more the attitude of demanding what society has to do for you that's what the right ethos does respect me and i'll respect you so new head teacher arrives at school so you're saying to the children it's okay to be disrespectful to the new head teacher until they've met with your approval until you've decided that they're being respectful to you and with the people doing this have they got no foresight is it not obvious that, that undermines discipline and respect in a school the message to kids should not be you only need to be respectful and obedient if the adults meet with your approval so again the same philosophy we're going to the home 
if you take uh, children, teenagers especially, what do they interpret as a parent not respecting them? That could be interpreted pretty widely, couldn't it? So they would take that as justification for being disrespectful back again. Relationships are more important than rules. And what's that mean? I mean, is it more important to have nice chats with your neighbour than that they don't murder you? This is just a reflection of the philosophy throughout Scottish government, education, social work, etc. Punishment out, rules out. Uh, there's just that talking about things, mini counselling sessions is the way to go. But the ultimate stupidity of this was at the school where I used to work. They had a rule that said, no, you may not bring in weapons and explosives. That's the rule. And the inspectors came in and said, oh, no, you shouldn't have rules. Rules are too authoritarian. You should have guidelines. So the school now has a guideline that you don't bring in weapons and explosives. And they're completely nuts. So this tries to do away with the idea of morality. All, all problems, behavior problems, is just a matter of misunderstanding and making friends again after it. This is the foundation of so-called restorative practice. And there, was, there was a case... Um, a couple of years ago, maybe a teacher in Fife was stabbed in the neck with a pencil by a pupil and a representative of the EIS union said in the media that what should happen in these cases is that the teacher and the pupil should sit down and enter into a dialogue to restore the relationship. In other words, to make friends again. So you don't need rules. You just need to you know, make friends again and everything's OK. OK, children marching on Parliament demanding a home where children flourish. A march on the government to demand a good home. Almost all these children, you would assume almost every child in Scotland, has already got one. But if these kids are demanding it from the government, doesn't that sort of imply that it must be the government that provided it for them in some way? At the very least, Chief Mammy Sturgeon is going to help make your home even better, help mum and dad do a better job. You grateful for that, mum and dad? Mm, probably not. Now, this sort of children's rights nonsense it's worse than nonsense it's an insidious philosophy it's going on all over the world but it's especially bad in scotland as in so many other areas scotland really cl can claim to be a world leader in this sort of area so the scottish government gives money to the children's parliament the children's parliament stuffs kids heads with smp philosophy uh, then the kids demand that the government does what they were doing in any case then the government can appear to be on the kids side and that message is transmitted to children around Scotland. That's pretty sinister, isn't it? And what's the theory behind all of this demanding rights? Well, it's not from the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. That's fairly neutral, I would say. The theory behind the way rights are interpreted in Scotland is basically cultural Marxism. It's the idea that society consists of oppressed groups in need of liberation and oppressor groups who are a bit mean and nasty to the oppressed groups. So in this case, children are encouraged to see themselves as an oppressed group. And the oppressor group, obviously, is adults, apart from the really nice adults like the ones in the government. Right, how should children realise that they're oppressed? Well, inequality. Are children and adults treated the same in every possible way? Well, no, of course they're not. Ah, that's inequality. Therefore, children, you're oppressed, you need to be liberated. Now, what's the answer in the cultural Marxist mindset? What's the answer to oppression? It's always the same. You need the government to intervene. The government needs to step in and defend your rights and uh, boost you to gain equality with the oppressor group. So this rights march is helping to induct children into that mindset. It's the social justice mindset that views the world as a power struggle between different groups who have to demand rights from the government. So if you want to improve your lot, what's the way to do it? You don't go and take any action on your own. You demand that the government acts on behalf of your special group. Now, Mary Todd, the children's minister, is that her devious plan? Is she trying to induct children into Marxist philosophy? To be honest, no. I, I don't know who she is. I would guess she's taken this job, not with a particularly well thought through philosophical stance on the matter, and has just gone through the gone with the flow, completely open to influence for those around her. But those around her who are influencing her, they often do know what they're doing. That's people in charities, sock puppet charities, academics in particular, the United Nations, etc. So she's influenced by people who do understand that strategy. 
A couple of years ago, I went to uh, listen to an academic from Edinburgh University speaking about the abolition of childhood, this idea of liberating children, treating them the same as adults. I asked him a question at the end. I said, are you a Marxist? He said, I, I'm Marx curious. He's sort of half a Marxist. And these are the sort of people that are having the influence and they're setting the tone for what the Scottish government is doing. So effectively, the Scottish government has been used by these people. So it's not the government's devious plan, it's more the government's lack of independent thought and its willingness to be led by those who really do have a de devious plan. Now, if you want to get the SNP on board for something like this, all you have to do is dress it up with enough positive sounding adjectives and that's enough. But it's the same with John Swinney. I mean, is John Swinney really wanting to break down the barrier between sexuality and childhood? Is he really wanting to smash heteronormativity and eliminate gender? Is he really a radical queer theorist? No, I don't think he is. I just think he's weak-minded. He just goes with the flow. And the people who influence him are these things, but he just gets swept along with it. How about the opposition parties? Well, I think the Greens really do get it. They know exactly what they're doing. Uh, Labour and the Lib Dems, similar to the SNP. And the Conservatives, they've just got no clue. They don't see it. So this sort of thing, this children's march, they should be up in arms about it. But this is just the tip of the iceberg of, of this influence in Scottish schools. They should be up in arms about it, but they can't see it, so they can't effectively oppose it. It's a sorry state of affairs, and the solution to it is to support the Scottish Family Party so that we can get in there to make a difference. And to support us, join us via the link below. On the next video, I'm going to look a bit more about the Children's Parliament and their meeting with the Scottish Cabinet. Thanks for watching.